You're listening to the Marginally Geeky Show, the Epically Geeky Book Club. Greetings and welcome to the Marginally Geeky Show, the Epically Geeky Book Club. I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm joined by Mandy and Chris. How are y'all doing? Good. Excellent. Uh, so, how have y'all been since the last when we t- last time we talked? <laughs> Good. Nothing in particular yeah. happened. Nothing. Uh, happened. It started snowing again today. That's kind of it. Yeah, here in Central Texas, we've had it. We're in that point where it's like you know not quite freezing but it's kind of getting it's getting down to the 30s and then by the afternoon it's like 17 it's just like oh Oh. great my allergies just are mm, yeah not good so my poor boys poor nicholas has just had allergies out the wazoo so um all right well i I guess with that uh, said uh so last time we we did um modern romance uh mainly because it was we read it at the beginning of february of course february being the month of love uh <laughs> so uh this for technically for uh february's book we read uh pleasure unbound by larissa ion ion i think i own oh i own sorry um and uh like we were talking about before the show uh, one of the reasons I wanted to start this show is because um, I listen to a lot of audiobooks and I kind of found myself like reading the same type of things over and over again. And I was like, you know what, I need to branch out. And I thought the best way to do that was to, you know, get with a group of people, not only that I had uh, that I could talk about the books that I've been reading with, but also kind of branch out and find some stuff that I wouldn't normally read. Um, this falls under that, uh, but it's all good. You know, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm here to I'm here to expand my horizons, as it were. So. um so uh tonight's book is uh, like i said pleasure unbound it's technically the first book in the demonica series Mm -hmm. how many of them are there um there are now a total of just a second um well there's five it five in the original one and then she's got um yeah i would say five five okay you could class other books that she's got. You could sort of lump them in because some of the characters cross over. Oh, okay. <laughs> but five. Oh, good deal. I thought there was, yeah, I thought there was like, usually there were three or four of them that show up. So I wasn't quite sure if there were other ones that I just wasn't seeing whenever I would do searches and stuff on it. So, um, all right. As usual, I have a lot of notes on this. Um, I will go ahead and say, this is the first book that we've read that, um, we have read some books that have some, I, I kind of graphic violence in it, which, um, you know, being, being an American, uh, you know, vi- you know, violence is fine, but when it comes to sex, you know, we have to, we have to censor that, um, for whatever reason. So just as a heads up, um, if you are, if you don't enjoy, um, graphic sexual content, this is not going to be the book series for you. <laughs> um, I <laughs> if, you, if you do enjoy graphic sexual content, this might be the book series for you. Um, so um, we'll go ahead and start off. What were your initial thoughts uh, or just kind of a, a quick you know, roundabout? What, what, what did you think of the book? Um, Chris, you were one of the ones that uh, suggested this book. Yes. So I'm okay. assuming you, you enjoyed it. Yes. So I actually, I did a book, re- my first ever book review I wrote online was for her book the fifth book in this series. I didn't know it was a series. I just grabbed it because I liked the first Mm -hmm. sentence and it's called Sin Undone. So I wrote this review. Somebody, the lady who ran the blog actually used to be in a writing group with Larissa Ione and sent it to her and she read it and she commented and I fangirled. She's really really nice. She's super lovely. Um, So then I went back and read all the rest of them and I have read this is the third time I've read this book, but it's been years Mm -hmm. and I was really surprised that I'd like it because it's sort of, for me, the sex is sort of secondary. Mm -hmm. I just really like, cause I, it's, she wrote it. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever watched angel, but she wrote it, uh, based on one of the episodes where angel got hurt and they, 
his crew had nowhere to take him. They, there's no hospital to take demons and vampires. So she got inspired to uh, write it out of that. Oh, that's and, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So knowing that and then uh, – so for me, the sex is secondary because sometimes it's – after the fifth time she's called penis something else, it's like, <laughs> really? I'm just going to scrunch my nose up on that one. Um, <laughs> I like the demons. I like her take on angels, the whole hell, uh, uh, human world, the realms, heaven, the whole night. I just like the way she interprets it. Okay. And she knows her stuff. <laughs> well, good deal. Um, so, so, Mandy, what did you think of it? What were your, what, what uh, kind of your initial thoughts? Oh, I liked it. It was, it was fun. I, I did wonder what number in the series it was because there was so much backstory i wondered if we'd picked up like the second book um like when rogue died and all of that um so i was i just looked and it was number one um so i can't imagine when you jumped in at five was it just no i it was really i didn't know and then um i didn't found i didn't feel like i was missing anything i didn't feel like i was um confused or anything like that because it's she does a really good job of of integrating other characters and she's really good at multiple uh points of view with her books um and making it really and really fluid and just referencing things real quick so that if you've you know you're reading along and you forget from book one who those characters were or how they relate to each other she just does a quick explanation so yeah, yeah. but yeah all those i mean I, they seem like secondary characters but i can see how their own stories would mm -hmm. spawn different book um so yeah i liked it it was fun it was um i was driving around listening to it with the windows down and i did at certain points like roll the windows up because i was kind of embarrassed but uh no it moved fast it was fun i can't believe you guys listened to audio i just giggle the whole time if i actually listen to somebody say the right stuff. I, just, I, just, I don't know how i, I couldn't do it well you know me i i listen to everything audio wise so. i know you told me you were listening to it i'm like oh God. <laughs> um so okay um a couple of quick things so my initial thoughts um f first off i when i started listening to it i had a bunch of other stuff going on and normally when i listen to a book i'll sit there and, and stop and take notes and you know keep going a little while and stop and take notes and i didn't have that luxury when i was listening to it so i was like okay i'm just gonna listen to it all the way through um and then um I'll go back and listen to it again and take notes the second time. Maybe I'll be in a, a point where I can and take notes on it. And um, I'm glad I'm glad I did it that way because I, you're right, Mandy. Like I felt like, am I missing something? Because like all of a sudden, like you're thrown in and, and there's a lot of stuff going on really fast. And I mean, it it, it does not. Um, it, it just puts you in the middle of everything, right? You know. Um, and it's not just being thrown in the middle of something. It's being thrown into the middle of something, and then like there's like five or six characters that all show up with like, like the first couple of pages or, you know, what would have been the first couple of pages. And I'm just like, man, this is a lot of characters and a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, uh, so mm -hmm. going back and listening to it the second time, I was, I, th I think it was easier for me to take notes on it. Um, partially because I, I had a better idea of some of these characters and I'm like you, there are some characters that show up and I'm just like, all right, well, that's a, that's a th side throwaway character, you know, not really good. And then they come back or they do something or they become something of more interest later on. And you're just like, wow, they really weren't a side character. They were, um, they, they just weren't, you know, th this wasn't their time to really, you know, come out and, and do anything yet. So, um, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to tell you my, my thoughts now or, or save them till later. Um, I'll save them till later. So, um, so let's go ahead and get started on it. So, like Chris said, um, the way I kind of described it in the, uh, the, the, I guess the preview for the show is that, um, if, if, um, if Twilight is sitting somewhere at about a five, this isn't like an 11 because it's not just, <laughs> oh, there's werewolves and, and vampires. There's werewolves and vampires and demons and multiple, like there's multiple races of demons. And yeah. like you said, you know, they talk about heaven and hell and, and portal i mean they're like this dumps everything into it and just like hits the gas and goes so yeah, well, she um, has a glossary at the beginning of her book with all the definitions and stuff oh that would have yeah. been helpful yeah that's <laughs> right it's how old this book is glossary nice that would yeah, have been helpful like, having an audio like, version of that it's a page long it gets more and more as the books go on yeah i can imagine <laughs> so 
All right, so the book starts off our, our um, I guess, our two main characters, uh, Eidolon, mm-hmm. is a demon. He works to save um, a baby eater demon uh, and ask uh, about a scar, then uh, stops on his own. Wait, scar, and he stops his own heart before he can uh, answer anything else. Okay, uh, Ian Shade, his brother, uh, think Aegis. The the okay, so the Aegis are. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it throws a bunch of stuff at you. The Aegis are a um, group of humans that are uh, kind of a brotherhood that are sworn to kill demons and vampires mm-hmm. were basically anything supernatural. Anything um, non. Anything, yeah. Um, yeah. And they think the Aegis are selling demon parts on the black market. Um, it's about this time a human slayer is wheeled in. She's one of the Aegis. And they argue about he- uh, helping her, and Eidolon decides to save her. Um... And in the process of figuring out what the, you know, why the hell she's there and this, that, and the other, they start doing some tests and they figure out very quickly by looking at her organs, she's not completely human. She's a half blood. She's a half, she's half demon. Mm -hmm. Um, Wraith, the third brother, um, is half vampire. Uh, and he's basically like, Hey, listen, we should kill her. They get into a big argument and he leaves. Um, and it's at this point we're kind of really introduced to our other main character, uh, the love interest, as it were, uh, Taylor. She's the she's the the, the half blood. Uh, she wakes up, and I, I put gets drugged, but it's not technically drugged. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other one of his other bro- one of Eidolon's other brothers is it Shade or Wraith? It's Wraith. Um, Wraith. Is able to um, mess with people's minds, and he basically. Um, gets her going <laughs> sexually. And so she kind of wakes up and it just is immediately like, um, she wants to jump in. So, um, Eidolon is a Simnus demon mm-hmm. and they talk about this. He has to bond with a female or basically he's going to go crazy. So after, after a certain, at a certain point in his maturity of his species, um, which there's only male versions, um, they have to bond with someone or basically they just like rape everything that's in sight uh, yeah. and lose all of their, you know, more higher level thinking. They just become mm-hmm. this, this monster essentially. Um, so anyway, Wraith puts the sex fantasy into Taylor's mind uh, with Eidolon's image. Um, and they have sex. We're going to put it mildly. Uh, <laughs> but he's not able to get her off. And, um, she realizes that it's not a dream. She kind of is in like this dream light state. She realizes it's not a dream. Um, and then she gets, she becomes sedated. Um, all right. I put a note on here. So even though in this book, it is a mind thing that is mm-hmm. done to her. Um, Essentially, she's kind of like date rape Drake <laughs> because, yeah. uh, <laughs> but yeah. here's the thing that I wanted to point out about it. Um, what I find interesting about this book and other books in, in this type of genre is that um, if we were to carry these actions out into the real world, it'd go a lot different. <laughs> but oh, yes. Be- but because we know they're going to most likely, I'm not going to say always, we know they're most likely going to end up together. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's sexy, but yeah, it's, I'm just reading this and I'm going, wow. Um, yeah, that's not how that would work. (laughs) No, granted, I don't want to be that guy that's able to bend reality so that there are demons and werewolves and vampires and all this other stuff. But this is the one little picky thing that gets me. I'm not going to be that guy. Um, yeah. So, um, anyway, so back to the story. So, um, well, you know what? Actually, let me get and stop there. So at this point, like I said, like we talked about, there's a lot of stuff going on. They throw a lot of stuff at us. Um, thoughts up to this point or thoughts about uh, the scene, as it were. <laughs> Was it a good scene? Uh, I think the first time I read it, because it happens like so quickly in the book, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, well, she's not screwing around. I guess we're just yeah, jumping right into it right um and i think because i'd already read that other book before i sort of 
accepted the scene as it was and I, it wasn't it, it's it rides that line is it is it is it rapish is it yeah consensual yeah. um because he is it's part of their species right like each brother's got something to help with with wooing females or whatever to exactly. try to yeah them. so that's his <clears throat> it's not very i mean it's not he's a demon so it's not like he's you know <laughs> He's supposed to be an asshole. So. And he is. He's a of the three brothers, yeah. he's the biggest douche. And they explain that even more so when they start talking yeah. about like the stuff that Eidolon does to cover up for him or whatever. So yes. yeah, they yeah. Do. So any thoughts you wanted to throw in there, Randy? No, I mean it's not terribly ethical of a doctor to oh, Yeah, have... there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean <laughs> suspension of disbelief for everything else that's going on and really for demon behavior it's pretty tame so yeah right okay yeah <clears throat> so um oh, that is not what i wanted uh, phone. all right so at this, this point uh we have a flashback and um we're shown where how tay actually taylor gets to this point uh her and another slayer named janet are going after a demon um and part of her body starts to go numb. She explains this more in the book, but part of her body starts to go numb. She basically isn't able to uh, fight off the demons and Janet gets killed and she feels horrible about it and, and thinks about it the rest of the book. Um, flashback to modern time. Uh, <coughs> time. So Tate wakes up. Uh, she is attracted to, to Eidolon. Um, and then he starts to explain her, explain to her that she's at the um, underworld general hospital which I, it's just a hilarious name <laughs> to me um and she can't attack him because there's an anti-violent spell on the hospital um he takes this ring that she has as payment that which was given to her by her mother more about that later um and ask her about her parents and she won't say anything about it um all she basically says is she doesn't you know she didn't know her father that's about the only thing he can get out of her um of course he knows that she's uh, a half blood. She has no clue, and she's trying to figure out why the hell is this demon asking me about my parents. Um. So E, Wraith, and another character, Yuri, argue about killing Tay. Um. Eidolon decides he wants to try to track her, and says, um, um. And says that her demon DNA is slowly but surely taking over. Um, so he, he wants to basically let her go track her and try to use her to get back at, uh, the ages. So, um, so he just, uh, he discharge, uh, discharges her, uh, Shade and E, his brother, uh, get into this argument, uh, and he ends up, um, taking her to the car, uh, and they're going to go check on Nancy. Nancy is a, uh, a vampire nurse. <laughs> uh, who has not shown up for a couple of days. So they're like, well, we're going to stop by, see what's going on, Nancy. She hadn't shown up. Not good. Um, it's at this point we switch over to another character. And this was one of the other things that we, we talked a little bit at the beginning there. Um, they throw a lot of characters at you. And like I said, a lot of them to me at first seem like they're side characters or characters that I don't know if there anything else is going to go on. So I didn't, the first time I listened to the book, I didn't like really pay too much attention to him. And then I was like, I came back and I was like, Oh, wait a minute. That was the same character they're talking about before. Uh, case in point, Jim, uh, Jim is a half demon. She's volunteering to hand out, uh, boy, the auto correct on my phone is horrible. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's, she's volunteering to hand out condoms, uh, on the street to humans. Um, and she sees, um, Kanan and, um, she's got a big crush on him. He's, you know, this, you know, hulking guy or whatever, you know, is, uh, really attractive to her. Um, he ends up dealing with this guy and, uh, she kind of sees that, you know, he's actually, he's, he basically, you know, sports himself as being like a really nice kind of laid back guy. And, um, he's supposed to be, uh, at a, um, uh, shelter for kids. And, uh, so that she's kind of got a little thing going, for, going for him. Switch back over to Taylor and Eidolon. Um, they show up at Nancy's. No one's answering the door. So they break into the apartment and find Nancy almost dead. She's basically been butchered. Um, he tries to comfort her and decapitates her because, you know, she's a vampire. Um, and uh, they get they kind of get into this squabble between the two of them. And they don't realize these two, uh, these demons coming in that are um, 
they basically eat the dead and uh, they have a little confrontation with them. They end up finding this portal. They have to fight more demons. Um, and it's at this point that Eidolon decides he's going to take Taylor home. Um, we get a little side comment about Sh uh, with uh, Shade and Wraith and they're talking about uh, Eidolon's change. So uh, we already kind of mentioned it before. Eidolon has a certain amount of time. He's almost up on his time. Um, to where if he doesn't find a mate, he's going to basically turn into this, you know, monstrous demon and lose his mind and everything else. So, um, Eilon takes Tay to her home, uh, to her place. Uh, they find the ferret, uh, that's destroyed the couch. Um, <laughs> yeah, Eidolon goes in for a kiss. She stabs him in the neck. Uh, they scuffle and then they have sex again. Um, <laughs> Cause that's what you do. That's that's apparently what you do. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I made a note on this one. Um, he's pretty forceful at this one, and um, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, you know, you're you're saying no, but you know, you really mean yes. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's one of those things that is. Uh, it's like. Yeah, this is kind of bordering on rape again, but we know they're going to get together, so it's okay. <laughs> at least we're hoping at this point. Um, I almost <clears throat> wondered maybe that's why some people in particular that are part of this show didn't read the book. But anyway, um, <laughs> so um, anyway, thoughts on thoughts up to this point. <clears throat> I, yeah, that's, it's not too far in the book when that, when they go back to her place. Um, but it is like these ones, most um, romance novels and erotic romance novels, they follow a formula, right? So there's sort of this template that you have to follow and scenes are supposed to go a certain way. And, and a lot of them, the men is, the, the men are usually very sort of strong willed and sort of it's very much gone with the wind type of stuff and uh that's how a lot of it goes so as long as you, if you're not if you're expecting a politically correct love <laughs> story it's not gonna happen in this at all and it's been a it's been a really long time since i'd read this and um again knowing how it ended i i just didn't didn't think about it at all right it's right. Just another thing to move the story along um, do y'all remember the episode of Buffy where Spike kind of tries to rape her? Do y'all remember that? I remember. I never he, watched Buffy, so. No, this is very, this is Buffy-esque too. Okay. Like, this but, world that they're in. Like, that, that episode makes a lot of people understandably uncomfortable, but I heard someone make the argument that, like, Spike and Buffy's entire relationship is built on, like, physicality and fighting. Mm -hmm. And, like, he didn't realize she was injured at that point. And so he thought they were just, you know, foreplaying um, because they're used to, you know, fighting each other and resisting each other. Um, so it kind of changed the dynamic. So maybe he wasn't aware that the game wasn't the same. Um, so I, I, that's what this book kept reminding. And they call her Buffy over and over again. Yeah. Or yeah. And Buffy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering, um, in the in the book version, because I listened to it, do they capitalize Buffy, or is she, is it just like a noun in the world of I'll capitalize it? I think <laughs> because she's such Larissa is such a big Buffy, yeah, uh, Angel fan. She also speaks fluent Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> she's a big Trekkie. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> But yeah, when they're like um, physical warrior type people, they seem to have like different ideas of foreplay. I think. Yeah, it's like that's how I kind of read it. That's a, that's actually. I mean, that's a fair. That's fair enough. Because mm -hmm. I mean, okay, so let's be honest. Not, I mean, you know, we, we are living in a time where political correctness is is you know trying to become the the mainstream thing, um, which you know I'm all for. Um, we're living in a time, especially right now with the, the sensitivity of, of the Me Too, uh, movement and, and everything that goes along with that. Um, and, but, you know, and I don't want to downplay it, but it's also in the aspect that it's being written in, it's like you said, it's being written as a, it's a formula, it's a formulaic book. 
Um, and that's just how a lot of those types of books go from, you know, talking with some other friends of mine that, you know, have, have read books like, you know, um, in this vein. And, um, but there's also, you also can't deny the, there's also, I mean, we've already suspended belief, you know, our belief to the point that we know they're probably going to get together. Mm -hmm. Um, so there is that aspect of it being, you know, safe in that, we know they're probably gonna get together, so it's it it definitely falls on the. It comes across as being hot, and interesting, and sexy, and not so rapey as it were. But you know, like I said, if it's one of those things that you know cast in that light and in that world, it can come across that way. At least to me, you know, looking at it in you know cold hard daylight, it's like whoa whoa this is this is not yeah. cool, dude. But so yeah, it's one of those things. It's like you know. In the realm of the story in the book, it is yes. what it is. So, yeah, it's a very kill or be killed world. So it's a yeah. they're like what Mandy said. They're very physical with each other. So it would make sense that they're physical like that when they're you know having sex. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, thinking about it now, I mean, um, she's de- she's definitely not she's not a weakling by any means. She can oh, hold her own, enough. and she's an awesome oh. killer. So. You still have to kind of keep it in your mind that even she though can herself. exactly like if she yeah. really wanted to, you know, she, she might be pull- saying no at first. If she really didn't want this to happen, she probably could just go and like kill him. Oh, yeah. And yeah, she could it, so. for sure. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I have to point this out because it is and I've got I've got to point out something else that's, that's funny as well. Um, so at this point, she still cannot orgasm. Mm-hmm. Um. Um, and they talk about it a little bit and she really won't say why she, why she's not able to orgasm. Um, it's just that, you know, she has this mental block or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think it was at this point or it was shortly after this point that I messaged Chris and I said, I have a theory. <laughs> yeah, <we did. laughs> yeah. I said, uh, I know you're the only one that's definitely reading this book. Uh, mm-hmm. so I don't want to just put it out to the, everyone else. Cause I don't want to give anything away. I said, but my theory is um, event- at the end of the book, they're going to have sex and she's finally going to orgasm. And then that's going to be what kind of gets them together. And I said, that's my theory. And she didn't, you know, uh, Chris said, well, you know, I don't remember. I've got to reread it, but uh, okay. And I'm just like, all right, well, we'll just see how that plays out. Mm-hmm. Um, needless to say, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, and at this point, um, after they have this talk, you know, uh, she basically reaches underneath the pillow, grabs a pipe that she is hiding there and knocks him out with a pipe. So, you know, as people do. Um, so we flash back over to, uh, uh, Jim. Um, she checks and sees that her parents are gone. They've been taken because, um, they want her to, uh, basically start cutting up these other demons. So yes, there is this side plot at this point. It's a side plot. Um, to you know where these people are uh, capturing demons and uh, cutting them up and, and selling their organs on the black market, and they want her to be in on this to help them out with this. So, um, so Tay chains up E, leaves him, uh, leaves, and she heads to the um, Ages hate uh, HQ, uh, where she walks in on um, Kynan and Lori, his wife, having sex. Yeah, very brief sex scene. And she's basically just like standing there. She's just like, well, just stand here until they're done. Um, as one does. <laughs> um, and tells them about uh, her partner dying, her getting uh, healed at the demon hospital. Uh, but she completely leaves out Eidolon for some reason. She's not sure why she's left out his name in this whole thing and everything that's going on with him. Um, but she does. We're introduced to another character named Jagger. He comes in. Uh, he's Taylor's rival. Um he has a puncture wound on his neck, um, and basically they give him a, give her a tracker that they want her to put on idle on. They're basically like, look, he said, you know, if you need to contact him, you can. We want you to put this tracker on him so we can track him down, find out where this hospital is, and go destroy it. <coughs> so, um, so she goes back home. He's still in the bed. He's actually par- uh, petting the ferret. Um, <laughs> tells him about watching. Um, a demon kill her mother in front of her. Um, 
and then tells her about this club uh, where his brother was killed and was possibly by her. Uh, Neil say doesn't really sit well. Um, then Taylor has an episode. Her body starts to go uh, numb again. She basically kind of falls uh, or passes out. He manages to uh, move the chains over to where he can get the key. He holds her and he's comforting her and he tells her um, he's waiting for blood samples to come back, but you're, you're hefting. And of course that doesn't sit well with her. Um, so Eidolon leaves and he goes to look for Jim. Um, he see, uh, she sees him leaves outside. Jim knows that Tay is a demon as well. So she knows that she's part demon. He's pretty sure she's part demon. She's the only one that I know at this point. Um, she thinks about it, thinks it might be true. It kind of, you know, fills in some odd puzzle pieces in her life that she never could really quite explain. And is like, you know, kind of, you know, she's mainly pissed off the fact that this demon's come in and he's able to, you know, vex her in a way that no one else has been able to do so. And, you know, get her hot and bothered. And <coughs> now he drops this bomb on her and she's just like, you know, what the, what the hell am I getting into? You know, that asshole. Um, so anyway, Jim tells, uh, Jim's been following Taylor for years, tells E about her parents, sees Taylor in the, uh, and, um, Okay. Uh, oh yeah. So at, at this point, um, she's telling uh, um, E about her, uh, Taylor's parents, saying that you know she saw him or whatever. He has this kind of thing come over him, and he sees Taylor in her, and basically kind of starts going after her in the car, and then realizes, oh hey, it's not really Taylor, um, and tells her, hey, drive me to the hospital. I need a blood infusion to hopefully um, kind of cause this this, uh, this this changing effect to to die down a little bit. So. Um, so we go to another scene. There's these two werewolves, uh, Luke and his mate. They're locked up, uh, because it's the full moon and they start having sex as werewolves, as one would do. Um, these dudes break in and basically, uh, kill her. Um, and or, I'm sorry, they capture her. He escapes and he hears them telling them that, you know, they don't want to kill him. They want to capture him and, and keep him alive. Um, so he manages to kind of escape. Taylor goes out hunting, kills a demon, attacks a junkie. Uh, Kynan shows up um, and she kind of runs off. The transfusion does work for E. Um, Luke comes in. He's in bad shape. He tells E that the Aegis, you know, killed his mate. They smelled like apes, which is a very specific thing. Um, and that they want him alive. So, um, so at this point... We, you know, we start to get, you know, this side, this, uh, this hunting of demons for, uh, their body parts is not so much as, you know, it was kind of started off as just being this whole side thing. And now it's starting to really mix in there. There's, there's more to this, uh, because they're actually starting to attack people from the hospital as well. So, um, let's see, kind of shows up at Taylor's house the next morning, tells her, uh, he's lost, uh, two werewolves during the hunt. Uh, Jagger calls later, says that he has, uh, the doctor, um, and so she goes to the headquarters and sees that they're torturing the doctor or they're torturing this demon. And when she gets there, she's like, she can't, you know, she's all upset. She's like, how did they capture, you know, Eidolon? I don't know how I feel about this. I should be glad, but I'm, you know, I don't want to see this. And it turns out it's, it's a different demon. It's Yuri. And the reason for this is, um, they put, she put the tracker on Eidolon's, I think is pager. <laughs> so. Which I, I I did not know this. Did you know that doctors still use pagers? Yes. That's crazy to me. <laughs> it's probably the easiest technology, like the most universal, yeah, easiest thing. But I, I just think it's crazy that that's still a thing. But anyway, so he had given his pager to Yuri, and they tracked that down and track, you know, got him. And they think it's Eidolon. She tells him, "Yes, that's that's the guy. Yeah, that's him." Um, and so they give her a phone with this. Uh, the spell that's supposed to be a tracking spell. And they're basically like, open up the phone. It's going to start counting down, close the phone. Uh, and, you know, we'll be able to track it down and come back <clears> or whatever. We want you to go back to the hospital. Um, and at the, it's at this point, Jagger is holding her and Lori kicks her. And it's just like, you know, we have to make this look believable while you're hurt or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not right. Mm hmm. So, uh, Tay goes to the hospital, uh, gets patched up, sees these demons that are vegetarians, uh, yeah. which Eidolon starts telling her about. We'll talk about that in a second. 
And then <laughs> um, the phone gets opened. It starts the countdown. She realizes that when she opens it back up, that it's still counting down. And she thinks back to something that one of the other uh, Slayers was saying that they've created. A <coughs> they're working on these explosives that they can put into elect electronic devices that'll go on, uh, go off eventually. So she flings it out into the parking garage and it basically explodes, kills some people, destroys a bunch of stuff. Um, and before we move on to that point, so the, um, the, uh, the, uh, you know, we, we, we get to the point where it's like, oh, okay, so there's something more to these demons anyway. First off, they keep pointing out the fact that these demons have a hospital, which is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> y'all are demons y'all are supposed to be you know merciless and just you know killers and this that and the other but you're actually helping people and this doesn't seem right um so maybe there's something more to it and then we're introduced to these demons that are basically vegetarians or like at one point they talk about a race of demons that like comes out at halloween and just literally eats pumpkins and that's all they mm -hmm. do so um thoughts up to this point that was one of my favorite parts because uh, Taylor was like, yeah, they come out at Halloween and she's about to say, and they eat children. He's like, no, they eat vegetables. Um, and there's the little one with the broken leg. And that's just, yeah. that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I liked that part. It was like, oh, hey, listen, they're not all just, you know, they're all, all <laughs> monsters as it were. So, um, I don't want to kill Tay at this point, but he can't, um, she realizes that she means nothing to the ages, duh. Um, and so he decides to take her to her place to get her stuff. So they walk in on her place. There are two slayers there. They're like, oh, hey, we thought you were dead. And yeah, so you're alive. That's great. And then try to kill her. They get into this big fight. Um, and then uh, they, they do end up telling him that um, telling him that Jagger gave the order to kill her. Um and then he ends up killing them off. So, or he ends up killing one of them and lets one of them survive. Um, let's see here. Uh, calls Jagger to come get other. Okay. So she calls Jagger tells, basically is telling him, you know, look, come get the other guy. I know, you know, I know you were the one that told, you know, put the heat, the hit out for me. Um, so she grabs her weasel, <laughs> Sorry, it's a joke. uh, grabs the weasel and some clothes and heads to E's house. Um, and she tells him, you know, uh, she's turning into a demon, uh, but Shade, you know, might be able to help out. Uh, she finds the Demonica book. This is interesting, uh, which is the Demon Bible. And it says Satan created demons and like humans, uh, they can choose to be good or evil and that Earth is actually hell. So it's kind of an interesting thing. It's like, um, number one, I, I, I liked the idea of this Demon Bible. And it's like. Hey, by the way, so uh, y'all have the book of what God said happened. We kind of had the book that had the other guy's, you know, opinion. So, which was very interesting. Which, you know, I'm glad that, because uh, whenever I, I saw that the name of the, the series was Demonic, I was like, where is, where is that coming from? I, I'm, getting, I'm sure that'll show up somewhere in the book. And then when this showed up, I'm like, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. So she's, you know, she's basically being schooled. Everything she's been taught up to this point that all demons are bad and they need to be killed, you know, um, you know, on, you know, as soon as you see them, just, you know, freaking kill them. And she's learning that, hey, they can actually be good or evil and there's different kinds and this and the other. So, you know, her entire world is basically just being rocked at this point. Um, he tells her, um, I'm sorry, she asked him to hold her. Um, they start to have sex again. Uh, she resists. Uh, he has to really, um, he has to release and ask to go to the hospital. She relents, um, and then tries to make her get off again. Still can't get that to work. Um, and it's at this point we get the information as to what her mental block is. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is where it gets horrific. Um, she talks about how, uh, after her mom died, foster dad tried to rape her. She didn't kill him, but she's pretty sure someone else in the house dead. Uh, and that's at that point she's living on the streets. So we get a little bit more and we're like, Oh, okay. So she's kind of got a, a mental block about that. That's, that's understandable. Um, we get this side thing about E summoning this vampire high council via a portal. 
and he has to pay for Wraith's crime. So basically, his brother, half brother, I guess you'd say, but brother Wraith is a vampire. They're only allowed to kill so many people. He keeps going over his limit, and for whatever reason, instead of uh, punishing Wraith, he comes in and takes the punishment, and they just like brutalize him. Um, he shows back up. She's taking care of him. She has to call Shade in to come in and help. She's like, you know, what the hell happened to him? And he explains what's going on. And um, <coughs> what's funny is, is every time the brothers show up and something's happened to Eidolon, they're like, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. 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 They immediately look at her and blame her. It's immediately, what did you do to my brother? So, yeah. which I thought is hilarious because, I mean, in the real world, that's kind of how it would work anyway it would be like you know you'd always take the side of the person you know so it's like what did you do to that person so yeah um let's see here so um jim goes to the uh, taylor's apartment she has to hide in the closet while the slayers come back uh, to, uh at the room uh he shows back up like i said we go through the whole thing um jim calls the next morning meets e at the hospital um she's being pressured by her, her parents kidnappers um they figure out Paige, a nurse, has been helping uh, harvest organs. Eidolon returns home. They have breakfast. Um, she gives him a blowjob. They have <laughs> sex. They try different positions. Still can't get her off. I'm going through this for a specific reason. Um, and then we get the real reason why she's not able to orgasm. And it's because she watched a what's called a soul shredder demon um, rape her mom. And... Um, the reason why this is so troubling to her is because it appears to her that her mom was actually enjoying it. And Eidolon's like, no, that's what the soul shredder does. The soul shredder, you know, messes with your mind and does everything they possibly can. And, uh, you know, to, to screw with people or whatever. So, um, and it's at this point, uh, she has the mental breakthrough and, uh, she's good to go. So I was wrong. I thought, like I said, I thought I knew this was going to happen. I thought it was going yeah. to be um, at the climax of the book. <laughs> um, but yes, it happened much earlier. So I was like, I said the reading and I go, well, damn, I was wrong about that. Uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, so the next morning he transforms into a troll shredder when she wakes up, attacks her, but she basically knocks him out or whatever. She's trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Call Shade again. Once again, Shade shows up. What the hell did you do, my brother? Um, you know, kind of that running joke there. Um, and they end up figuring out, oh, the reason why he turned into a soul shredder is because that's what her father was. Um, and it's at this point, she runs off to the warehouse. Um, she meets Jim and Jim tells her that I'm your sister. Which doesn't set well. Uh, she doesn't really care for that. You know, she's mm -hmm. like, you know, um, she she's pissed off because Jim grew up. Um, she she grew up with like a demon family. She she's like, you know, they were they were loving for demons, but they were still demons, and they she never could you know live up to what they wanted her to be. Yeah. Um, and that she and we t and they talk about this later in the book, and she actually. Um, um, idolizes uh, Taylor for actually having somewhat of a relationship with their mother who she never really got to know. Um, <laughs> but it's this usual thing of these sisters, you know, uh, coming to blows and are pissed off at each other. Um, so they go back to Eidolon's place. Um, previously, they had talked to Paige. They figured out what was going on. Um, they figure out that some of the ages are working with the demons uh, to butcher the demons at the abandoned zoo, which is where they get the whole thing about... Um, uh, the monkey smell, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's at this point that Jim learns <coughs> that uh, Kynan, who she's been crushing on, is actually one of the heads of the ages, and that doesn't sit well with her. So, um, Jim and Taylor talk. Taylor doesn't really like her. Uh, attacks her after Jim says that uh, she met their father, uh, and then leaves right after that, and then uh, envies uh, Tay's relationship with her mother. Um. And that she actually says that the soul shredder came after her and she killed it. She killed their father. Uh, she didn't get a chance to tell Tay this. Tay ran off before then. Um, let's see here. I'll go ahead and go to this next part. Uh, so anyway, Wraith shows up, tries to seduce Taylor, but all she can think about, even with his mind power, she only can imagine 
Eidolon. Um, <laughs> pardon me. So they have sex again. Um, he has her taste his blood, which is part of the bonding ritual, uh, which is actually toxic to her. Um, and she ends up getting this tattoo on her arm. It's a temporary tattoo, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> And she basically, you know, he tells her, you know, you've got a certain amount of time to decide if you definitely want to mate with me. And if you don't, um, you know, it'll go away or whatever. So, um, and she asked about his change. He's like, you know, she said she don't, she don't want to bond with him. Um, she doesn't want to be his last resort. Now that's where kind of the big thing comes in. Cause everyone's like, oh yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's like, this is like the 11th hour. If he doesn't find someone quick, he's going to turn and it's not going to be a good thing. And, you know. Uh, he he's apparently choosing you, and she takes that as, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to be, you know, oh yeah. hey, I've, I get get with someone, guess it should be you. So, <coughs> any thoughts up to this point? Um, I'm trying to remember, I just finished this book, mm-hmm. just before I got on, so now I'm trying to remember it. Um. Yeah, so it, it, this book is very busy. A lot's happened all the time. Like, so the whole thing, there's no lulls. There's no, <clears throat> unless you, sometimes the sec, she's got some books that it's like four pages. You're like, okay, you wrap it up, move on. I get it. They're doing it. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I like this because you can tell that it's, it's, it's all going to come to a head very soon. All the plot lines that she's been working through through the whole book, it's all going to come together and it's all going to make sense. So you can feel sort of in her writing, the urgency of the right. situation. Yeah. 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 I felt the same way. At the, it's at this point, it starts to, <coughs> pardon me, my allergies are killing me. Um, you know, it starts to really pick up and it, it doesn't really let, you know, let off at this point. So, um, next day, Taylor wakes up, Jim's there. She basically, she, at this point she tells her, Hey, you know, I, you know, killed our father. Uh, I've been envious of you transforms and shows her her demon side. Um, Tay tells her that, you know, um, she told Eidolon about his brothers, you know, during this, during this fight, she mentions that, yes, she was at the, uh, they had another brother and at the, she was at this club where he was at, where he was killed and yes, she was there. And yes, it's very possible that I could have been the one that killed your brother. Didn't sit well with Eidolon. That's why he left. Um, and Jim tells uh, Taylor, you know, listen, Eidolon's not just going to bond with anyone. Um, he, he genuinely has feelings for you. So at this point, she kind of said, like, well, maybe I maybe I screwed up. And I shouldn't have said, no, number one, I shouldn't have said those things anyway. But uh, maybe I'm not just a last resort. Maybe he actually has feelings for me. Um Kind of shows up at this human. They get. They kind of come up with this plot to find out what's going on. Kind of shows up at the human hospital. Taylor confronts him. Tells her about the attempts on her life. Uh, the demon killing. Um, you know the the demon killing ring. Uh, that Jim is her sister, and uh, kind of basically is like he's floored. Number one, he's like, I don't believe all this stuff's going on underneath my nose. I can't believe you're a freaking demon. You haven't told me this shit. Um, don't come near me. Don't come near the house. You know. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and Eidolon tells Shade that Taylor could have killed their brother Rogue. Shade explains that, you know, listen, dude, you thought he was a, you know, you you basically saw the good in him. He was a douchebag. He was going to die. Someone was going to take that fucker out. Mm-hmm. If it was her, oh well. It doesn't really matter. You've got feelings for this girl. You know, he was a douchebag anyway. So, um, so he kind of, you know, he, you know, Softens him up on that. Kind of goes back to the headquarters. Jagger and several, Jagger and several others are missing. Um, he has sex with Lori. Again, they don't really go into it this time. It was one of the few times they didn't go to it. Um, and then she goes out <laughs> hunting. Uh, Taylor calls and says they're going to the zoo that night. So it's at this point we get to kind of the, the main head of the story. Um, they get to the zoo. Taylor sees Lori tied up, uh, has tied up Jim. Jagger and Lori kiss. Kynan shows up and sees it and basically throws down with Jagger. Um, Lori runs off and uh, Tyla, uh, T- I'm sorry, Taylor ends up uh, getting Jim out. Um, Eidolon finds uh, Jim's parents, let th- lets them go, faces off with three slayers. He basically has decided, you know, he's not going to be able to uh, 
do anything. Like, you know, he's basically, his time is up. He hasn't found someone to bond with. Instead of turning into this monster, he's just going to basically sacrifice himself and let these slayers take him out. Uh, Taylor shows up at that point. They end up taking out the, uh, the slayers, but also, uh, she realizes that she's, you know, she isn't the, his last, you know, she's his real choice. She has, you know, kind of real control over him. Uh, Jim at one point said, you're his weakness, but also his strength. And she realizes this and she decides, okay, well, um, you know, I, I want to be with you or whatever. So at this point, they basically find a small vet veterinary hospital little thing that's inside the zoo and have the bonding ritual, which of course means lots of sex. Um, <laughs> so they bond. Um, and of course this is where I thought, you know, going back to our earlier thing about her uh, not being able to orgasm. I thought that's what that was going to happen, but whatever. Um, they see Lori at the entrance. Uh, she says Eidolon looks like Wraith and ask uh, if he's an, a guardian elder. Now, guardian elder is supposed to be one of the high up people for the ages and, you know, are supposed to be, you know, there's like 12 or 13 of them. No one knows what they look like. They're supposed to be the, you know, the big head honchos or whatever. Um, Wraith shows up and she immediately recognizes him and like goes to hug him. And he's like freaking out about that. Um, Kynan shows up. Wraith basically sinks his fangs into Lori because he's, yeah, Wraith. He's a vampire. Yeah. Um, he ends up releasing her. Lori escapes. Wraith leaves um, and said he had nothing to do with killing the demons. Eidolon doesn't think he did, but it's he's also not 100% sure. Um, so they go back to the hospital. They still can't find Wraith. Uh, Shade checks Taylor. She isn't pregnant. That was the thing that was brought up earlier, if she was possibly uh, pregnant or not. Um, and she decides to do the demon integration so she can actually, you know, incorporate her demon DNA, as it were. Um, Lori shows up at this, this safe house with Jagger. He stabs her. Um, and she remembers Wraith uh, coming to her and saying that, you know, he was an elder. Um, she, you know, kind of like snaps out of it, pulls out the 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 blade, stabs Jagger with it. Um, whenever he says he's going to try to kill Kynan, Kynan shows up, kills Jagger, holds Lori as she dies, and then, like, literally drops a bomb and leaves the building. So, um, so we've got, because there's a lot of shit going on here, so we've got Taylor and Eidolon are together, and they're good. We don't know what the hell's going on with Wraith. Wraith is, could be part of this... <clears throat> this ring that's going on not quite sure um and then kynan basically you know had a traitor he killed him lost his wife in the process um don't, you know not, not a good situation there three months later taylor's working with kynan uh educating the uh, ages on the different types of demons um the hunting of demons have slowed down and uh taylor and jim start to get close and that's kind of where the book wraps up mm -hmm. um like I said, lots of stuff in this book. Lots of stuff going on in this book. So, <clears throat> any overall thoughts here at the end? Go ahead. I don't know what's going on with Wraith. That I, I <laughs> no clue what's happening. Mm -hmm. I feel weird because I know how it all ends. Like I was going to say, you know how it ends. How it so all we're ends. not supposed to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not right okay. now. No, no. Okay. He has his own story, so it comes okay. out later. Yeah. Like, did I miss something? Or was no. he the one who has the torture background where yes. that's why he won't touch human yeah. women? Okay. Yeah. Okay. He was tortured till he was 20. Till he's 20. Yeah, okay. till his brothers found him. Yeah. I like it. I liked reading it again. I was like, oh, yeah. Now I know why. Like, And I gave all, I had, I had the whole series uh, in her other series, too. And I gave them all to my best friend because she started reading them too. And then um, when I went, when I found out we were reading this book, I had to go over and be like, I need to borrow this back again. So she has the whole library and I'm going to have to, now I want to read them all over again. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're really, they're fun. You can't take it too seriously, especially with a lot of the relationship stuff, because it does seem, because this book is 10 years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the climate's changed and stuff. So you have to sort of take into account that, where they are in, in their world. It's a very kill or be killed. It's very violent. A lot of these characters are sort of 
they've had really traumatic backgrounds and a lot of them don't know how to act socially in certain situations. So they lash out and don't know how to cope and things like that. So that's why a lot, they're, they're really fucked up characters with fucked up backstories. So it makes them interesting, but it also makes them how we who are in the real world wouldn't act in that situation or, or anything like that. They don't, they're not like that. And they do things that are completely nuts, but that's, what's fun about reading them is that it's, total escapism absolute escapism none of this is going to make you think about your life in a different way none of this is going to grow as a person it's just pure entertainment and that's and that's perfectly fine you know that yeah. like, you know the, everyone needs that um um it, it's candy for the brain is what it is yeah. you know it's not yeah. like you said you're not you're not necessarily going to grow as a person or anything it's just no. it's fun it's fun reading and that's and that's perfectly fine you know the, yeah. the equivalent of that is Either bad movies or what we, you know, like I call popcorn movies. You just go in, turn your they're brain off, pleasures. and you enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, they're guilty pleasures. And what I like about romance novels um, is because they're always happily ever after. And so sometimes you just want to read something that just ends happy, where people are happy at the end. They went through all this crap and it just, they're happy together. And I like reading stuff like that, especially when, if, if I read something that's just super depressing or, you know, the news has been bugging me or whatever. It's just like, no, I can go to this world and I know it'll end happy. And sometimes that's all I need is just to know that it's going to end happy. And a lot of romance novels do end happily. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, granted, I'm not... I don't read a lot of romance novels, but I don't think the ones that would end sadly would probably be some of the more. Uh... No, but you get things like Nicholas Sparks where it's such a love story, but they're tr every single one is tragic. It's so tragic. Oh, My sister loves Nicholas Sparks, but she cries in every single book because of what he does to the characters in the storyline. So these ones, and I only read, um, Larissa Ione, and then I own, and then Sherry Ling uh, Kenyon are the only two romance writers that I really read because of their genre. They do sci-fi and paranormal and stuff. So I don't. I tried reading another one with just regular human beings, and it just wasn't as good. <laughs> All right. Well, at the be near the beginning of the episode, I uh, teased, as it were, uh, kind of my thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really care for this book, and here's why. Um, I, I don't think it's this book. I think honestly, the side stuff that was going on, the uh, the whole thing about you know the um, uh, the killing demons, you know, for the, the body parts and all that stuff, that was that was interesting. The fact that it was demons and vampires and stuff definitely helped out because I guarantee if this was a like you said, if this was just humans and just normal stuff, I would have been bored to tears. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't think I really cared for the book, not because it was this book. I think it's just because of this genre. Um, and it's, it's mainly because most of the drama, at least for the first two thirds of the book come from, um, that, that, that very stereotypical, um, miscommunication causes the drama, you know? Yeah. He doesn't want to tell her something. She doesn't want to tell him something. She lied. He lied. Whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. And but I'm the same way. Like in, in in movies. Like you know, if unless you know, unless there's something else going on in it or whatever. Most drama movies. I'm just like, no, I have got enough drama in my life. I don't need this. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so I didn't care for it in 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 that respect. Uh, like I said, now having all this other stuff going on, um, definitely helped. Yeah. Um, the sex, eh, whatever, you know, it's in there. It's not whatever. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just that, that type of drama. Um, I, I just don't tend to care for. So, um, mm -hmm. that being said, now let me ask you this. And I know you said it's been a while since you've, you know, reread them, uh, further as the series goes on, do we still have that type of drama or do we get other type Like, would I do you think I would be more interested in the other books in the series or is it going to be kind of the same thing over again? I'm just going to be like, eh. It's sort of the same because um, the books follow the brothers. Uh -huh. Each brother gets a book. Okay. So, it's a, and they are romance novels, so it's their relationships, but uh, the sec it's the same type of book in that there's multiple points of view, there's multiple stories going on, secondary characters. Um, the further the books go along, the more their story develops. But it is a lot of the same 
drama. Okay. Because the next book is Shade. <laughs> okay, good. I yeah. like the brother relationship. I like how they're just like, what up, bro? And like, I don't know what to think about Wraith, but I really like Shade and how he's like, oh, look, a weasel. And like carries the weasel around the apartment when all this drama is going on. He's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pet. No, <laughs> no I like the brothers. I do a lot. So that's good that the whole series is on them. Yes. Yeah. The, those five books are all, they're the brothers. Well, if we decide to read, if if we decide to read the other books in the series, I will. I'll read them. I just, like I said, it's this isn't my normal cup of tea. I'll just yeah, yeah, that, well, so. yeah. Which is why I'm surprised it got picked in the first place. Like I, when I was reading the <laughs> list, I'm like, oh no. I looked at it like I, oh, you know, that was it was <laughs> yeah. a voting system and it had one yeah. of the highest votes. I'm like, well, this is the next book up. So, uh, yeah, I was I was surprised because it is, uh, it does have that drama of. Will they, won't they, you lied, I hate you. No, I realize I love you. Yes. You're like, really? That kind of stuff can get to be a bit much with any romance novel. Like, it, and I, there was a summer where I read like four in a row. Uh -huh. And I was like, I gotta read something else. This, <laughs> I can't do it. It's all just the same. There's different characters in different uh, scenarios, but it, the formula is the same for romance novels. So yeah, after the fourth one, I was like, I have to something else take a break gotcha yeah i need a break well, oh. well okay. last month laney just laney just said this is smut and like that kept yeah. like coming back to me just like it is smut. just remember that every time yeah you get up and read it's it's smut but it's, yeah it was fun yeah it's fun smut but it is i mean <laughs> so all erotica novels are <laughs> Yeah, I, like I said, and it, it had it not been for the supernatural things in it, I just I would have been bored to tears. Oh yeah, that was my only draw to it is that I like the world she's created. I, I honestly, if she took out the sex part, I'd still read them. Mm -hmm. Like it's secondary. Well, yeah, because it, yeah, I could I could see that it's like, oh hey, it's in there, but it's not like it's definitely it's not, not the main draw. So no, 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 it's not important. It would still uh, the the story would still happen whether these two people, whether she described the sex or not. But it's also not like, I mean, yeah, it's a little, you know, the characters are set, especially, you know, the, the, the brothers being the, the type of demon that they are, that they are so, um, you know, uh, sexually involved, um, you know, that's written in there. So you, you have to have that aspect aspect, but it's not like, you, you know, I guess maybe a couple of them, but for the most part, it also wasn't just like, oh, hey, let's just throw this extra scene in there. It was like, no, it makes sense for what's happening in, in, in that yeah. point of the book. So, yeah. Yeah. And the type of demons that they are, just sort of that. It's a, co it's a lovely coincidence. Yes. A, a lovely coincidence. <laughs> sure. Lovely. Well, They're yeah. all about They're the sex. And that's part of romance novels, too. They're all hot. Yep. Everybody's hot in that book. Oh yes, everyone's sculpted and, and, and toned and, and chiseled and like all the women are like perfectly toned and nobody's got any stretch marks or cellulite. And, yeah. Yep. And they're all erotically charged constantly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just flip the switch. Good to go. All right. Um in, in dire contrast to that, our next book coming up this <laughs> next month is uh, Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister by Gregory Maguire. Now this is the same guy that wrote, uh, um, um, oh, what is the, the, the different take on, uh, the Wizard of Oz? Oh, Wicked. Wicked. This is the same guy that wrote Wicked, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, that will be our book for, for next month. So, um, that being said, let's talk about what else we've been reading. Has anyone else been reading anything else or? Uh, we are two-thirds of the way of the third book about to be the wizard oh, okay sure. there's two, two hours left race there's two hours left in the audiobook we're on like chapter 20 something so there i think An they caught a quest it. yes okay yeah so i gotta be honest so this is not my favorite one of the series i'm not a big fan of this one it's... and i'm having a hard time wanting to get through it I, I can understand that. I can I can see that one because this one's definitely kind of a, a sidestep from what the other two were. So yeah, Quinn thinks it's freaking hilarious. So the kids cracking up in the back seat of the car. <laughs> oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Tyler. Tyler. Tyler yeah. I love Tyler in this book. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Tyler, Are you kidding yeah. me? This is the worst writing ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How cliche can you be? Um, yeah, no. It's I've, just lazy. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, have you been reading anything else, Mandy? Um, I, we just finished Nickel and Dimes uh, for a book club I'm in at the library. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's an oldie, but it still holds up. Um, and then we're doing, what is this called? The last, I've, I know nothing about this. The Last Telegram. Um, that's the next book club book. And then um, I read The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating, which is just this like, yeah, it, it's exactly what it says in the in the title. Um, it's really just like this meditative uh book about snails like she's bed bound yeah she's bed bound with an illness for months and someone puts a snail in her room and she just like observes the snail because she can't do anything else and it's just really it slows you down and resets you a little okay okay (laughs) that's different um (laughs) so like i said i've been i've had a lot of stuff going on and because i had to uh, read this one twice or listen to it twice to be able to get the notes and stuff for it. Um, I'm almost done with next month's book already. I'm, I'm almost done with Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister. But I needed something to kind of fill the time between that and um, uh, starting this one. So I actually went back and reread Ready Player One concerning the movies about to come out. Um, and there was actually kind of a, a discussion on it in the back channel here today. Uh, they released some movie <laughs> posters for it. Um, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I want to see the movie. I'm, I'm excited for the movie. I don't think Mm -hmm. it's going to be anything like the book, but, uh, and, and and for what it is, you know, I'm just going to let it be what it is. And I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be one of those movies that I'll be like, Hey, did you like that movie? You thought it was pretty good. You got to check out the book because the book's like a billion times better. (laughs) So, um, yeah. My biggest thing about it is this will be the third thing that uh, Steven Spielberg has either directed or produced that is not original content. Um, oh. Content that I've enjoyed that I did not like his take on it. Um, I am not a fan of the Bayformer movies. I don't like what they've done with the Transformer movies. Um, I loved um, uh, War of the Worlds. It, in fact, it's probably one of my it's, it's, it's the first book I ever really fell in love with. Like, I read it in fourth grade. I loved that book. And I did not like the movie adaptation he did of it. Um, and it had nothing to do with Tom Cruise. I think Tom Cruise is a fine actor. I don't think he was the problem with it. I think it was the adaptation they did of it. And I didn't care for it. And now I'm coming up to this third one. I'm just like, I love this book. And I love Steven Spielberg. And this should be peanut butter and chocolate. But I'm afraid it's not going to be. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it'll, it, it may just be, you know, okay peanut butter and chocolate together, but it's not going to be that, you know, giant Reese's That's, cup that I'm hoping yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. So. No, no, that Logan's like, I'm going to hate it. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> like, we just chill woman. Like. Just let it, to, let it be what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, Ray and I are like, we have to just go in with it. <clears throat> completely forgetting what happened in the book. Like just, we haven't read the book. We're just watching this with fresh eyes. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to hate it. I'm going to immediately hate it if I don't do that. Yeah. As long as, I'll be honest, as long as it's better than uh, the adaptations of um, Abraham Lincoln Abraham Lincoln and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, I'll be okay. As long as it's got to be. It has, those, has to be. Oh. It has to be better than those. Yes. But I'm sure it definitely won't be uh it, it probably it won't be that adaptation like we got in the Martian because the Martian was like Oh, it was so good. That yeah, was really that was that was a great adaptation. So yeah. um what's funny is I didn't used to be that guy that like was, you know, oh I've read the book and the movie's coming out and I'm really worried about it. I didn't used to be that guy because I didn't used to do all that reading and now I've become that guy because these mm-hmm. books that I've read, I'm like, Oh, there's a movie. I hope it's good. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand that guy now. So, um, 
That is it for our show, ladies and gentlemen. If you would, please give us a five-star rating on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, wherever you listen to the show. Uh, we do the show once a month on uh, Wednesday nights, usually, on uh, uh, YouTube. We do it live. You can join us in the chat room. Uh, we've changed up, or well, I've changed up my streaming situation here, so it's gotten a lot better, which was the comments in the uh, in the chat room. So, um, as all, You can also check out the other shows. We have the Epically Geeky Show. We're doing an episode this coming Sunday talking about the media that we really should have watched by now or seen by now. We just haven't. So it should be a fun show. Um, and then sometime or another, we may end up getting another, uh, uh, uh epic rhythm and bruise from, from Laney, but we'll see. Um, where, Oh, you can find us on at epically geeky.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at epically geeky. Where can we find you online? Mandy? Oh, Twitter at Mandy Joe Shelton. Uh, Chris, where can we find you online? On um, Instagram at Cedar Birch Cottage. We are going to be documenting our renovations and our minimalist lifestyle. So okay. if you want to check that out, that's what we've done. Awesome. And as always, you can find my individual wacky adventure online at Optimus Gene on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night.